Hey guys, hope everything's going good with the sub, and I hope you're on your best behavior, and you're getting everything done well, and I hope you did a great job on the midterm. Um, instead of trying to have the sub go through the notes with you, I figured I would uh, dictate this, and you guys need to take notes over it, because this is what we're going to cover next. We're going to talk about text structure, which, as you can see, uh, has to do with nonfiction organizational patterns. Basically, how text is structured, how it's put together. Um, we got to know these things because we're going to be using them uh, pretty soon to to better go through text and understand what they mean. So these are your notes. You can take them how you want. Uh, you can use them on the assignments we have coming up. So, but I, you don't worry about writing everything down word for word. But just try to get the big stuff. And the sub can pause this at any time to give you guys time more time to write. So text structure, how text is organized. If you figure out what a structure of a text is for nonfiction, it's like knowing which key to use in a lock. How many of you have ever tried to get a lock open and you didn't know which key it was and it took you forever to figure it out? Knowing a text structure is knowing what key to use. You still have to take the key and do the work to unlock it, but at least it tells you what you're, what you're working with. So paragraphs within a text may be different or a text could be structured all the same way. And there are going to be five types of text structures we're going to talk about. So you should take notes over each one. Here we go. The first text structure is chronological. And we should know from the different Greek and Latin roots that we've done that chrono means time. So if a, to a story is told chronologically, it's told in order of time. Um, a lot of the stories we read are just simply told in order of time. What happened first, what happened second, what happened third, and what happened next, what happened last. Um, so, like, let's say somebody moved away, they met a girl, they fell in love. Um, a lot of those chick flick kind of movies and books are told in chronological order. If you see a timeline, um, a story that's history, historical fiction, um, historical nonfiction, they are generally told in order of time. So they start at the beginning, and then they work through to the end. Now, some of you are probably saying, well, every story is told in order of time. Not necessarily. A lot of them are. This is probably going to be the most common, but the other four, you'll see the uses of those also. So this is chronological order. This is the first text structure. The second one is sequential text structure. It basically goes a, steer, a series of steps in the order they occur. It's not cause and effect. It's just sequential. Here's a couple of examples. How you put, on your, how you put your shoes on in the morning. You put on the shoe, then you make two loops, you tie them together, you tighten the laces. That's not cause and effect, because putting on the shoe does not make you tie the loops. You do those in a, in a specific order like that. Um, a, a recipe would be sequential order, like peanut butter and jelly sandwich. First you get the bread, open up the jars, spread the peanut butter, spread the jelly, combine them, and enjoy. These do not have to take place at any specific point in time. Time is not important in a sequential story. So like the last text structure was sequential. Um, it just told it, the, it told you the time, it told you when things happened in, I'm sorry, in chronological. For a sequential story, the time doesn't really matter. This could take place yesterday, it could pl take place tomorrow. It's just the steps have to be in that proper order. So that's sequential. That's the second text structure. All right, the third one is one that we're all pretty familiar with. It's cause and effect. Um, chain of events, a series of events. Uh, one thing causes another thing to happen, which causes another thing to happen, so on and so forth. Uh, a lot of the stories we read, um, especially in nonfiction, are told in cause and effect. Um, you guys are pretty familiar with it, but I don't know if you're as familiar with this. There can be one effect that had many different causes that combined to make that. So let's say you don't feed your dog, you don't pet your dog, you don't love your dog, that could cause your dog to run away. So you could have multiple causes have a single effect. You can also have one cause has multiple effects. For instance, this one, there were a lot of karate movies made in the 60s with Bruce Lee and things like that. This caused karate schools to open. This caused more people to buy nunchucks. And this caused more people to go to the hospital. One cause, multiple effects just like there can be multiple causes have a single effect. So this will be used a lot in research papers and things like that to try to find why things happen. 
So this is going to be an important one to know. The other one, it's similar to cause and effect, is problem and solution. So in a problem and solution text, an author states a problem and then gives solutions to that problem. Um, for instance, let's say you're missing books, that's a problem. You put them in the closet or you get into lockers or something like that, those would be solutions. Okay. Um, or another one, eagles were endangered, that's the problem, solution, they make laws to protect eagles. It's very similar to cause and effect except there's an opinion, there's an answer. In cause and effect it doesn't try to explain why things happen or the best way, it just explains what happened, what caused it, what had the effect. Um, in problem solution, they, they are going to give opinions. Usually you're going to get one problem and multiple solutions or multiple problems in a single solution. You guys wrote a paper like this for my class not too long ago. You stated a problem with the school and then you gave solutions. So you can see how problem and solution is similar to cause and effect. Alright, so that should bring us to the fifth and final text structure we're going to talk about. And it's the one I know you all love, compare and contrast. I know you've all written compare and contrast papers and you're going to write more this year for me. So we should be pretty familiar with this one. Obviously compare means similarities, contrast means different. So if you're reading a compare and contrast, they're showing what's the same, what's in common, and what they have that are different. Apples and oranges. They're both fruits, they both have seeds, they're both healthy. Similarities. They're different colors, different tastes, different locations. Those are some differences. Um, we, we read some compare and contrast papers. Uh, you're going to be writing some. So that's, that's the fifth text structure. So to review, you should have chronological, sequential, cause and effect, problem solution, compare and contrast. So you should have notes on all five of those. And what we're going to be doing now, we're going to look at some, we're going to look at some graphic organizers that we're going to use, and then we're going to do a few examples of each one. So use your notes wisely the next few minutes. Don't worry about writing these down right now. I just want to show you some of the different graphic organizers we can use. For something that's in sequential order, you could have the event and then you could list the steps in order. If you had something that was cause and effect, you could have the cause and effect and then the little arrow cause and effect and it co kinda goes back and forth. For compare and contrast, you could obviously the Venn diagram is something we're all, comp we're all used to. How many of you know what a Venn diagram is? Raise your hand. So pretty much all of you. So remember it's the two circles that overlap each other. So this is another way to display that. Problem solution. Um, you have a problem. These are the problem solutions right here. Descriptive. Um, we're not going to use this one that much so you don't have to worry about that. But just realize that we are going to be using these graphic organizers this year. Alright so we're going to practice now. Um, the first few we're going to do today is our easy ones. We're not going to do the hard ones till I get back. But what I want you to do is read the paragraph and the sub can, uh, can pause at the end of the... When I say pause, the sub is going to pause it and let you guys read it. Then you guys are going to try to figure out what text structure it is and then write it down. And then we'll talk about the answer real quick. So, are you ready to go? No? Too bad. We're going anyways. Here we go. Alright, so go ahead and read this one, number one, about deviled eggs. And the sub can go ahead and pause it and read it and then play when you guys are ready to talk about it. All right, so what do you guys think? Hopefully you said it is sequential. Oops, better change color on that. It's sequential. There we go. Um, so as you, as you guys hopefully can see, it went in order of time. It could have said first, pop out, then add mayonnaise, mustard powder, then fill, finally cover. So it goes in order of time. It, it's not cause and effect because popping out the egg yolks does not make you add mustard. It just tells you what order you're doing the steps in. All right, let's try another one. All right, so go ahead and read this one, Sporks at Erickson. And go ahead and pause it and then talk about it and then hit play when you're ready. All right, got it? What did you guys think it was? Go ahead and just blurt it out real quick. 
Right. It is compare. Oops. Compare and contrast. And obviously, we're comparing and contrasting basketball and volleyball. And they use some other signal words like both, each. And then they tell you the differences. They're saying, however. So they're telling you similarities and differences between volley volleyball and basketball at Ericsson. All right, let's do the next one. All right, number three is called the lazy student. And hopefully that does not describe any of you right now. But go ahead and read this one, talk about it, and then see which text structure you think it is. All right, we got it. This one maybe was a little trickier, but hopefully you said it was chronological. It was told in order of time. He started off the day when Tim woke up, then he went to school, but he didn't do any work. The days passed, so time is passing. Mr. Morton called Tim's house. Tim still wouldn't do any work, and then Tim failed. Some of you maybe said cause and effect. Um, it's close, but Tim waking up and not wanting to go to school, yeah, his mom maybe took him, but we don't see the specific causes and effects. This is just chronological. It just tells you a story in order of time. Let's do one more. All right, number four is called failing classes. So hopefully it does not describe any of you right now. Go ahead, pause it, read it, talk about it, hit play again. All right, got it. Hopefully you did get that this one is cause and effect. Ooh, that was terrible spelling. Cause and effect. The, the effect is that they're failing classes. And they give you multiple causes. Um, maybe the work's too hard. They're lazy. They don't go to school. Those are causes. The effect is you fail classes. All right, I lied. We're going to do one more. Ha <laughs> ha. All right, last one is called passing classes. So it's the opposite of failing classes. So read it, figure it out, talk about it, hit play. All right, there you got it. Here we go. This one is problem and solution. So if you got it right, give yourself a big pat on the back. It's problem and solution because the problem is students are failing classes. And then they give you multiple solutions. Study more, ask questions, try harder, come in for extra help. So hopefully you figured out these text structures and we're gonna do more when, uh, when I return. Remember this tomorrow because you're gonna be using this in the activity you do tomorrow. So how many of you think you got it? You're good. How many of you need a little bit more work? That's all right. So we're going to shift gears. You're, you're going to do. We're going to do a little bit of practice with summarizing in a second. So go ahead and swap over to the other video.